God is good. Well, I'd like to uh, to start with uh, uh, going to uh, going to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Wonderful section in the Scripture that really outlines some things that uh, are amazing in the simplicity of what God is doing and what God can do when we let Him do the work and not us. Uh, we kind of get in the, get in His way, and and just like Adam and Eve kind of got in his way when they did their own thing instead of doing uh, things the way God told them to. But here in Deuteronomy chapter 28, the section that deals with curses, what I want to talk about is tonight is reversing the curse. In Genesis, in Genesis excuse me, Deuteronomy 28, it says in verse 1, And it shall come to pass, if thou hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, uh, by God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then it proceeds to talk about the blessings that will come on you. Overtake you, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. That's all we have to do. All we have to do is hearken to the voice of the Lord our God. Hearken means to listen and obey. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Hallelujah. Blessed shall be thou when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies to rise up against you to be smitten. Oh, that rise up against you. <laughs> he doesn't cause them to rise up. To be smitten before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. These are rock-solid promises from the Word of God. It's really amazing. And it's all predicated on the verse 1, learning to hear the voice, the voice of the Lord. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee. He's going to command it. Hallelujah. You need a, a blessing commanded over you? Hallelujah. I command a blessing over you, and God will continue to command them over you. Isn't that amazing? I mean, you know, God is so good. Every problem, every gnawing issue that, that sticks in your craw, that causes you to lose sleep at night, uh, every one of those issues God is going to command, and he's going to command a blessing over those things. As we get still and quiet and learn to trust in his, his ability in those things, as we freely give them to him and relax about them, rather than take them back in our, in our consternation and our you know, mental uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, movies, you know, that nonstop movies, as we continue to give them really over to God, not just you know, say the words, not just say, God, you take this from me and, uh, and then go back to worrying about it, but really giving it to God and moving on with his agenda uh, and forgetting about it. It's amazing how God takes care of blessing you in the midst of trial and tribulation. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people, verse 9, unto himself, as he hath sworn unto you, if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in thy ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. Hallelujah. You know, you're like Godzilla walking in the room. You know, it's just, just a, a terror to the devils in the restaurant you just walked into, or Walmart or something. You know, this is, this is, this is awful, uh, awfully a lot of fun. It's, it's just a, a turn on to be able to walk in the presence of God and let him go before you and vanquish your enemies, even the enemies you didn't know about, the devils that were lurking to uh, plot against you as you walked into the, the grocery store. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, they shall be afraid of thee, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give you. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, and the heavens to give rain unto thy land, 
in his season, and to bless all the work of your hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, thou shalt not borrow, and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail, and you shall, uh, thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe to do them. Hallelujah. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words. Now that word, words, there is the word debar. It means any of the speakings. In other words, any of the revelation, the voice of the Lord, which I command thee this day to do uh, to, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Hallelujah. So that's the promise. That is the blessing, but what happens is people are walking in, in curses. People are walking without these blessings. You see how simply they're all hinged on the relationship that we keep with the Lord, uh, hearing his voice. Check in, in, with, in, in with him every day. You know, you, no matter what you are doing during the day or what you have on your plate when you get out of bed in the morning, take the time to spend it with the master. Take the time with the one who can order your steps, who can determine the course of your day and cause it to prosper and cause, you know, 15 of your 35 agenda items to be done when you could only get done one of them by yourself, by your own efforts. I mean, I tell you, God is the most productive, the most efficient, the most amazing partner that you could ever have. Hallelujah. It says here in verse 15, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Hallelujah. How many times we go out the door without hearing from him, without spending time with him, without, uh, you know, really spending heart investment time with him, to hear him, to observe to do all the commandments and the statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And, and what follows is a long list. A uh, much longer list of curses of the opposite of the of the things we read about in the first fourteen verses. You know, we don't want to live there, and if we are living there, here's the antidote for getting out of living there. We 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 live not under curses if we are living in the place of fellowship and oneness with our Lord Jesus Christ and with our heavenly Father. But you know, all this started back in Genesis, and I want to show that to you uh, and, and show you kind of a tie that, uh, or a little bit of the, the detail behind why Genesis 14 is, is such a simple matter, why we have the blessings of God that accrue to us as we learn to hear him uh, and not, and not to run in our own uh, lawlessness. Genesis chapter 2 is the record where Adam and Eve sinned. They had the option, they had the opportunity to uh, eat of the fruit of the tree of life. And I believe it was another teaching that we did uh, some months back here on the uh, Monday Family Fellowship that, uh, where I shared about the tree of life and, uh, and about how the tree in the garden is guarded by cherubims, uh, how it's, uh, uh, the uh, access to them hinges on hearing the voice of the Lord, and, and the tree of life is Jesus Christ. The, uh, the, he is the wisdom that, uh, with which God created the, the heavens and the earth. He is, the, he is wisdom. His words are uh, 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 life. They are eternal. Uh, it says in John chapter 6, they are, they are life, they are spirit, and they are life. They are eternal. Uh, and the words that come from him, are they produce the same effect as the words that come from the tree of life, which is to say, they are linked to eternal life. So the more eternal life words we hear from him in our, in our private uh, prayer closet, the more life we have for ourselves and to give away to others. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a connection. So here in Genesis chapter 2, uh, we start in verse 9. It says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasing in the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, and, of course, our, uh, our, our, our friend uh, Adam and, uh, and his uh, buddy Eve 
They didn't do so well with this instruction. It says that the Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden, in verse 15, to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. And, you know, you can think of the knowledge, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the, the tree of the knowledge of human thinking, human reliance human wisdom, as opposed to the fruit of the tree of life, which is the wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom that has no peer. It has no no comparison to the wisdom of mankind. The wisdom of our terrestrial has nothing of the wisdom of the supernatural. If we depend on the wisdom of the supernatural, we will be blessed. That's what the the uh, passage to the first 14 verses of Deuteronomy said in 28. But if we depend on the wisdom of self-reliance, your own figuring things out, your own uh, you know capacity to, to make things happen by your own two hands when you're faced with a problem, when you rely on that, that wisdom becomes the wisdom of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and it produces death. It produces everything but the the, uh, the 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 blessed result that that uh, we need to live by in order to walk in eternal life. So verse sixteen, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him, and out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought to them Adam to see what he would call them, and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Hallelujah. Smart boy. Named everything. Hallelujah. So, they fell. When they fell, they were expelled from the garden. When they were expelled from the garden, God set up cherubim to guard it, to keep them from ever reaccessing it in their humanness, in their lack of spiritual connection. The cool thing is, you and I can reaccess it. We we go through the cherubim to into the Holy of Holies. The cherubim also guard the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies is where we access Jesus Christ and we access God our Father in the secret place of the Most High. We have that privilege to go in and to come out. And it's all predicated on the blood of Jesus Christ and our faith in him and our the relationship that we begin to build as we take the time to press in and and take the time in the secret place. Make the time to keep divine appointments with the Lord. Take your notebook, write down what he says. Uh, you know, these exercises unto godliness are absolutely profitable for you not only you, but your future generations if the Lord tarries. Because your life changes the atmosphere around you. Your life literally changes the whole earth. It has that kind of capacity to impact. If you're praying for somebody in Australia that the Holy Spirit tells you about, you're praying for uh, you know, a, a, a village in China that's raising up a church despite the opposition, if you're praying for a move of God, a revival to come into all of, uh, you know, Rwanda and Uganda and Burundi, you know, those are life-changing things generated by the Spirit of the Lord. And if you get behind it and keep on probing and pressing in and allowing the Spirit of God to give you the revelation with which to pray, even if you're on the other side of the world, you can change destiny. You can change the, the eternal life of so many. You can bring about cataclysmic growth in the, for the kingdom of God. I mean, what if Paul did not start the school of Tyrannus? Would the word of God have moved over all of Asia in two years and six months? What if, what if he had not obeyed to go out and minister to the Gentiles? What if he had uh, you know, done things his way? Well, of course, we know he did things his way for a little bit uh, in going to Jerusalem that time. But, uh, but, but what, if, what, if we, what if we did things our way? Nothing is going to happen. If we do things the way the Lord directs, by getting revelation from him and allowing him to establish the church in you and through you, 
against which the gates of hell shall not prevail, if we do things by hearing his voice, by allowing him to bring the blessings and the prosperity and the growth and the outreach, the supernatural, then that is what's going to accelerate the growth of the kingdom through little old you and little old me. Hallelujah. So it's awesome what we are capable of because of who is within us. Glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, boy, I tell you, you know, I, I just get so excited. And, and so the other day in thinking about uh, God giving us the privilege of being able to teach faithful men who will be able to teach others also, I, you know, it's just stunning and staggering. And I, I just praise God for that. Well, let's go to uh, to Revelation. You know, you might think, well, you know, it's cursed stuff. I mean, I, I thought it all got done away with Jesus Christ. Well, yes, just like healing got done away, or the, the uh, sickness got done away with Jesus Christ, or disease. You know, he put those on the cross. Uh, Matthew eight seventeen says, just like he took our sins on the cross. And yet we're still wrestling with sickness and disease, right? So, according, as we take him at his word, as we recognize that by his stripes we really were healed, we can learn to step into that understanding and wisdom as we spend time in asking him in the secret place how to apply it. And it's the same way with curses. Curses is everyone that hung on a tree. So we know that Jesus Christ took our curses, and yet he did it in the same way that he took our healing. In other words, he gave us the availability to get out from under our sicknesses and disease and gave us the availability to get out from under the curses that Satan is always trying to hurl against God's people. And the interesting thing is, there comes a day when those curses are done away. Hallelujah. But it's not during this period of time. It it occurs uh, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 3. It says, and there shall be no more curse. Well, guess what? You learn from that, curses still exist. Jesus Christ, however, gave us authority over them, hallelujah, to deal with them decisively. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, hallelujah. They shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither the light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. Think of light as revelation. And they shall reign forever and ever. But you know what precedes this? The first, the uh, few verses prior to, in verse starting in verse one, it connects the no more curse with a time of being of walking in revelation, walking by revelation. Here in uh, twenty-two verse one it says, "And he showed me a pure river of water of life." Hallelujah. You know, there are many metaphors in the in the uh, scriptures. Water is associated with the Holy Spirit, for example. And we are washed with the washing of the rhema speaking of Christ. And and that's how in Revelation, in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 26, 27, it describes how he washes you and I so that we become a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or blemish. Hallelujah. So that learning to download from above the words that Jesus wants to speak to you, the words that the God our Father and the Holy Spirit want to speak to us, as we learn to drink those in, it enables the blessings of Deuteronomy chapter 28 that we read. It enables us to get into the garden to access the tree of life, which, of which I believe Jesus Christ is the tree of life. He is the wisdom of God. He is all those things, that the, the characteristics that are mentioned regarding the tree of life uh, are all uh, I, directly identifiable and lined up with Jesus Christ's characteristics. But here in chapter 22, verse 1, and he showed me a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, there was the tree of life, which uh, which are the twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree uh, were for the healing of the nations. There shall be no more curse. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why did Jesus Christ say at the end of the great feast, in John chapter 7, he stood up and he cried, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. And out of his belly shall flow, shall speak rivers of living water. Here we see living waters again. And we see it in uh, in uh, oh, a couple of different places here. I think uh, uh, from chapter, chapter 19 and uh, chapter through 21 and 22, we, we see that the bride drinks from the waters of life. We see that the most intimate ones that Jesus will invite to sit with him on his throne are invited via their hearing and obeying his still small voice. So it's a it's a marvelous joy and privilege to be able to teach these pastors in Africa, for example, to teach hungry men and women how to drink from the rivers, how to drink from the fountain of, of living water. In John chapter 4, we see Jesus speak about this when he spoke to the woman at the well. In John chapter 4, this kind of blows her mind. So the woman, uh, after, after he encountered him, and Jesus said in verse 10, he said unto her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, that would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. He's talking about revelation. He's not talking about some, you know, mystical, uh, you know, a vaccination or, or you know, some, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's literally talking. Living water is talking about words from the throne room, the same kind of words with which God created the heavens and the earth. And that is uh, what the disciples, uh, particularly Peter, uh, said, Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words, the rhema of eternal life. These words are substantive. These words are life-giving. These words are powerful. These words that we get from the Lord and from our Heavenly Father. The woman said to him, Sir, if you have you have nothing to draw with, and the well is so deep, from whence then hast thou living water? And art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof of himself and his children and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto them, and said unto her, Whosoever, <laughs> he didn't even answer. <laughs> and the answer, the, you know, the unspoken answer is, yes, I am greater. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus answered and said to her, whosoever is drinking of this water shall thirst again, meaning the physical water. But whosoever is drinking of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Hallelujah. And you know what? That's so true. You know, we we can be so uh, worldly minded and yet so biblically sharp as a tack when it comes to the words of the Bible and be dumber than dirt when it comes to the things of the Spirit. Uh, and the things of the Spirit have everything to do with hearing and engaging with the Lord and with our Father through the Spirit. Whosoever drink, is drinking of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever is drinking of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into what? Everlasting life. That's why Peter said, Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words, the speakings, the rhema of eternal life. They are the living water. They are what we, what we certainly uh, uh, live by in heaven. But they are also what we can live by right now. That's why it's such a privilege to be able to access the tree of life, to be able to access Jesus Christ in the throne room, the sanctuary where he, where he hangs out. If we hang out in the sanctuary, we will be so different a person the more we do it. The woman said to him, <laughs> smart woman, Sir, give me this water 
and that I thirst not, either come hither to draw. I don't have to work so hard. I don't have to schlep water all the time, you know, from the well uh, out to my village, out to my house. You know, that's a big problem, in, in especially southwestern uh, Kenya. You know, people get free land out there to homestead it, but there's no water. So they have to they have to, to walk, the, and it's usually when women do this, they walk five kilometers, eight kilometers a day to get a bucket of water that they you know, are balancing on their head or, you know, lugging next to them. You know, I mentioned walking that distance with five gallons of water, trying to keep it from spilling. It's dirty water to start with. It's, uh, you know, muddy water from the creek. Uh, everybody does the washing, bathing, and everything else in it, uh, and uh, they're, they're, that's their household water. They have to walk it for that many miles to be able to have water for their family every single day, maybe a couple times a day. How long does it take to do that? It pretty much dominates the day. We have, and 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 that kind of um, that kind of burden is what the people without hearing and drinking freely from the waters of life are under. They're tired. They're 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 under such burdens. They're weary. They're, they're, there's no life without the waters of life. And you have the waters of life to be able to give them because you hear from the master. And as you get better and better at it, you continue to give more waters to other people. It's a wonderful, wonderful privilege. So the water said uh, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, either come here to draw. And Jesus said, Go call your husband and and come hither. And then of course you know the rest of the story. The the, uh, the woman said, Well, I, I don't have a husband uh, and then Jesus uh, reads her mail and tells her, Well, yeah, you've been married to five husbands, the guy you're with isn't your husband name yet. And the woman said to him, Sir, I, I get it. You're the prophet. And then in verse 20, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to our woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. We, for salvation, is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit, or by way of spirit, and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. You know what true worship is? Some say it's, uh, you know, songs and singing and congregational, you know, kind of kind of uh, sing. That's not what true worship is. It can be worship if it's by the Spirit. But true worship is what we do to hear and obey the Master's voice. That's literally true worship. God is, or God, a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. If we do forms of worship, it doesn't matter so much. Jesus nailed that in Matthew chapter 15, you know, uh, calling the Pharisees. Well, you did err, teaching for the commandments of men as to the tradition, uh, traditions. The woman answered him and said, I know the Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he's come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said, I am that am speaking with you. I am he. The woman left her water pot. She went. She got so excited, so blessed, just like we should be getting so excited with new adventures before the Lord every day. You know, the taking your shoes off, and this is holy ground kind of excitement like Moses had before the burning bush. We of all people are so blessed, and we're, we're so blessed with, the, uh, you know, being able to, to teach and infuse and be able to, to impart what God is speaking. Uh, but that's secondary. What we want, what we're really infusing and imparting is how they can hear for themselves and plug into the eternal life, like, you know, and, and they get so excited, they're dropping their water pots, they're getting on their cell phones and texting their, their brothers and sisters uh, and saying, hey, you've got to hear this stuff. You've got to, uh, 
you know, this is amazing. And in and, and breaking the bastard curse off the uh, pastors and the uh, 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 folks over there and teaching them how to do that uh, and dealing with curses and such, all by revelation, that's how we are to walk. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that's proceeding out of the mouth of God. So if man lives, hallelujah, our God is so good. Our God is so good. So really, the, the, the opportunity for us to be able to walk in our Ephesians promised land of blessing really hinges on our getting this. And it, just like the woman at the well, just like the eternal life that uh, Peter was talking about through hearing the voice of the Lord, these are all put parts and pieces of what we have the opportunity to tap into. In Ephesians, in, in chapter uh, 1, this book of Ephesians, many people have said over the years, it's really our, our promised land. And it is. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And I'll tell you, you should, you should hear John Crouch. And, and John, we're still working on those, uh, getting those videos up, but we're going to get them posted uh, so that you can see them on the website uh, for a lot more people to see them. John did an, an amazing job in sharing a lot of the figures of speech, the emphasis of the Holy Spirit, on many of the concepts that are here in Ephesians. And here in chapter 1 of Ephesians, verse 17, where I'll start, speaks to the enlightening by the Spirit and the, the, the connectedness with him, hearing him, as we, as we go through the section. I'll, I'll show these, point those out to you. It says, uh, uh, Paul ceases not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And here's, a great prayer of Ephesians. There's a couple of them in here. But here in verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Does that remind you of the section in James that says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He doesn't upbraid you. He'll, he'll give to you freely if you ask. A double man and man, man is unstable in all his ways. That's the, that's the person that doesn't ask. The person that doesn't learn to depend on wisdom from above. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge, in the epigenosis, the full, intimate, personal knowledge of him. Talking about relationship. When you're in a relationship, you, you talk. You, you do things. You talk. You communicate. The eyes of your understanding. Being enlightened. That means lit up. And it's talking about, again, revelation. That you may know what is the hope. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. The hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Again, this is all flowing from revelation. We're not going to get this just by reading a few words on the page. We're going to get this by going deep in the Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to connect the dots, allowing the Lord to speak into these things and teach you these verses. And what is the exceeding greatness of his supernatural dunamis power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty cross power and impact? which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality. Hey, you want to live above curses? You want to live above the devices of the enemy set to trip you up and be pits in, in your way? It's going to take revelation and a frequent revelation to be able to do that. But you can deal with principalities and powers and might and dominions. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come, and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that, and get this, this is, a, this is a present parcel, him that is filling all in all. See, Christ is not done with you yet. 
You're not a finished product yet. Neither am I. He's continually working with us to enable us to fulfill and to walk in greater destiny, greater a greater level of the assignments that he's giving to us, each one of us. Hallelujah. The, you know, the, the disappointments, the, the, uh, the, the problems in the world, all these things, those are, those are meant by the enemy to distract you from your purpose. I, I can't tell you how um, disappointed I get. Uh, if I tune into Facebook, I see so many people getting so tied up in politics so tied up in worldly issues, so stuck on doing things that, that, are, that are indeed very exasperating, but very distracting from the assignments that God has given you. What's our job? Our job is to move the gospel of the kingdom, to disciple all nations. Our job is to be about the Father's business. And all these other things are meant to be pits and snares and, and uh, uh, opportunities for you to walk out of your anointing, out of your calling, out of your assignments. And, and, and lose the rewards by doing so. Our job is to stay faithful in hearing and obeying, leading every thought captive to the obedience, the hearing and obeying of Christ. Hallelujah. And, and what a privilege, what a pleasure. But we have to be sharp to be able to separate out that which is meant by the enemy to trip us up and that which enables us to keep on walking with the Lord. And I guarantee you, staying plugged in with the Lord Jesus Christ Hearing him in a, in the in, as you spend time in the secret place, going through the the door that no man can open, no man can shut, and frequently throughout your day, accessing him, acknowledging him in all your ways, and he shall direct your steps. These are all uh, methods and strategies that we use to operate that should become our second nature, our primary way of operating. Hallelujah, and not letting ourselves get distracted by the world. It's amazing the privilege we have of walking pure holy, and unspotted in this world. And there's many brothers, many sisters that are getting very spotted, very uh, unholyly contaminated by the affairs of this life. We are to set our affection on things above and not on the, on the affairs of this life. We are to stay focused, to stay locked in, to stay uh, absolutely committed and devoted to learning to navigate by hearing and obeying what the Master speaks to us. Hallelujah. This is the way that we'll earn the same rewards and greater than the Apostle Paul did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a privilege. What an opportunity. You and I have glory, and you have a ministry. Everyone that is born again has a ministry from God, an assignment, an opportunity to serve and run and keep on running and keep on pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So many, you know, maybe want to look out and, uh, you know, imitate or, or get in somebody else's lane instead of just keep on uh, looking at the finish line in the eyes of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I tell you, we have so much joy, so much pleasure, and so much privilege that's been extended to us. We have, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, in the, in the early days of car racing, the, the cars didn't go that fast. You know, they're, you know, 30 miles an hour, boy, that was pretty fast. Now they're, you know, Bumping on 200 miles an hour on, on, you know, the Indianapolis speedways and all that kind of stuff. Wow. And, they, and over a period of time, the speeds have gone up. The tracks have uh, changed in construction uh, and the techniques and that sort of stuff has, has all changed and improved and gotten better and faster. The, the, the dangers, of course, have gone up. You know, the fire and the, and the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, all the kinds of things that can happen and, and something like that. But kind of like that in the spirit, our speed, our acceleration, meaning our spiritual tools that we have to work with, have increased over time. Our awareness, our understanding of them has increased over time. And it's incumbent upon us to use those to their fullest advantage for the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why God's entrusted them to you and I. And in doing so, it enables us to run faster, to keep on going uh, and and uh, uh, absolutely, you know, being victorious in, in new ways. But it still takes the same kind of mental focus, uh, not being entangled with the affairs of this life, like a, like a Jew of a soldier for the Lord. So God has extended to you and I such privilege, such opportunity, and, and we need to keep on running, keep on going, keep on, keep on uh, racing to the finish line and doing it his way and not our way. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm just so excited, excited to, uh, and I ask you to keep uh, Brother John in your prayers these next uh, 
uh, four days, uh, I should say five days by the time he's home, uh, but to be able to uh, run the race in the, uh, for the saints there in uh, assembled and gathering the pastors, those pastors are going to go out and be talking to uh, many, many pastors that they have, junior pastors in their churches, uh, and they will be going out to all of those churches, all the congregations that gather uh, on Sundays and uh, various other times during the week. There's literally, let's say, 700 pastors. 700 pastors, you multiply, uh, you know, times, let's say, 100 in each congregation. Hallelujah. That's a lot of people that are going to get to hear and be discipled to greater degrees, greater extent from the investments and the impartation that John is going to be sharing with them. So, uh, you know, the, keep him in your prayers. Hold him up with, with, the, with the joy of the Holy Ghost and, and uh, by the Spirit. Uh, we're continuing to do uh, some, some things and walking through the doors that God opens. And in the meantime, however, never losing sight of staying faithful to the calling wherewith Christ has set us free. We are faithful to the calling that he, he set us to, to go teach in uh, various places. God's opening the door. I just received an invitation to go to England to, to teach, uh, and we'll see how that pans out. But, you know, again, it's just a, a wonderful uh, example of God continuing to open more and more doors as we stay faithful to what he's called us to do. The only way we'll know what that is is to camp out with him at his feet, seek that better thing, and then how to execute it, how to do it, and how to go back and get more assignments. Again, staying at his feet. Hallelujah. What a joy. What a privilege. And I love you very much. And I'm so grateful for the, how God works in you to will and do of his good pleasure. And we all keep on doing the same thing. We'll see in our day and time the gospel of the kingdom going across to all the nations. Hallelujah. So keep on stoking and stroking. We praise you and, and uh, praise God and, and give great thanks for you. The uh, 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 line that... Uh, the Lord gave me this week in prayer, was that, you know, if we look back in our past and it's filled with uh, stuff that we regret, we'll never have a praise-filled future. But if we look back in our past and go, praise God, all those things happened to me for a reason. God could, took care of them. Here I am standing today and victorious through it all, and that, that, that sets the stage for a praise-filled future if we determine we're going to have a praise, if we determine to praise him for our past. Hallelujah. So anyway, a couple of nuggets, and, and uh, I thank God for you and love you. Uh, keep us in our prayers as we go to Finland and meet the relatives and all those kind of things. Uh, we'll be back and uh, look forward to joining you next month. Uh, in the meantime, we're also doing these uh, broadcasts uh, to the schools. Uh, we're not doing one in, in uh, Rwanda, but uh, uh, certainly in Kenya we've been successful in doing broadcasts just like this to each school of ministry uh, during one of their nights of the, uh, the school. Uh, and that just touches hearts and, and you know, it, uh, energizes and blesses them in just profound ways. So that's been a, a great tool. And I ask you to keep your uh, prayers into all this uh, technical stuff. We didn't get our audio quite right tonight, so I hope it's uh, coming through okay for you. But uh, we, we just praise God for all these opportunities to keep on running the race for that prize of the high calling. So, love you. God bless you. I'd like to pray. Father, you alone are great. You alone are the one that created us to bring you glory. And I thank you for the refreshing and the joy of being able to share your word tonight, to be able to see what you are doing in other places around the earth and to rejoice in the, the oneness as as we come together in one, in Christ Jesus. We love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for providing all that we need to keep on running with uh, just absolute greater ability and tenacity and, and uh, stamina and strength than we ever had. And we thank you, Father, for giving us your wisdom as we do it. So we praise you. Every issue, every circumstance, situation that that occupies uh, and, and uh, bothers uh, uh, and, and uh, distracts us. Father, we give to you. We ask your forgiveness for the times we have gotten distracted, and we thank you for continuing to enable us to keep running. So we praise you, we give you glory, and we thank you, Father, for the opportunities that you 
uh, put in front of us to have adventures with you and joy with you in the Holy Ghost. We praise you and thank you, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen.